welcome back to my channel. If you cannot tell by the username, my name is Katie. And today's video is a story time. So if you guys have watch the other video which you should have because at the end of the video i told you guys that i was going to make a part two to that and um go into more details about what has been going on in my life but i wanted to specifically save that for story time and this is that story time if you have not watched that go watch that first you know just support me you know just just keep it all in the family just keep my videos on loop and support me and tell a friend and a family member and a co-worker and an enemy and a foe and all that stuff but anyways um, I wanted to go ahead and tell you guys what else has been happening, but the other things I felt were more story time worthy. So we are going to kick it off with what just happened to me three days ago. Three days ago. So Saturday was a very, very, very busy day. So Saturday, February 22nd um, was both my friend's baby shower and another one of my friend's birthday. Yeah, so I had plans to go to both of these events. Now, um, of course, on the day of the event, my period starts. Now, if you guys do not personally know me, I'm here to let you know my periods are like severe. Like, it is so horrible. Like, I'm talking about my back hurts, my stomach cramps, I can barely move. Um, it, it's just it's just horrible. Like I'm running to the bathroom every five seconds. I can't keep anything down. My first day, I feel really nauseous. I get bloated. Like it's just a lot. Like y'all, it's a lot. But I've heard of a product that's supposed to help improve that, and I'm definitely gonna try it out. And once I do, I will come back with the video for any of you people, for any of you ladies out there that suffer from um severe periods as well um i'm definitely gonna go ahead and test that out and i will let you guys know so the good thing about my periods is that they only last three days and i know some women they be lasting a week and i, I just would probably die but um my periods last about two three days tops right but anyways so this was the start of my period and um yeah i was already feeling it <sighs> i'm already late because i had to make a stop at my mom's house and naturally i run on cpt time i'm letting anybody know um in this video for future references if you make plans with me you might want to tell me an earlier time so i can be there on time because i definitely run on cpt time unless it is absolutely important and you are asking me to be there on time but anyways other than that, I, I'm, I'm late, but this time I was extremely late. So I'm driving, um, and the way that you get to Fort Worth, you have to pass by two major cities um, along the way. So Grand Prairie and Arlington for you guys that are not local and don't know. So <laughs> at this point, um, I, I passed, I'm passing Grand Prairie, getting into Arlington. Um, I'm right there where the Grand Prairie outlets are for you guys that are local. And um, I'm about an hour and a half late. Now, one thing about me, I drive fast, fast, right? And I have this philosophy or this theory about cars. I actually have a lot, but two major ones that I always repeat to people is one, when you drive slow, you're more likely to get into a wreck because people take advantage of slow drivers and they cut them off, they blow at them, they run up on them, they just do all kinds of things, right? Like, I, that's personally the way I feel. So I feel like slow drivers get taken advantage of, but when you drive fast, everybody is looking at you like, oh, is, are they drunk? Um, are they mad? Are they crazy? Are they racing? So people get out your way. So <laughs> people get out your way, they stop, like, you know, they get out your way. So I feel like it's safer in reality and you know this is just my theory but i really want y'all to think about it like when you see a fast driver you don't jump in their way you get out the way you move over right but when you are behind a slow driver you're blowing your horn you're getting angry like you know you're driving up on them you turning the wheel like jerking it over trying to get in front of them so um that's just personally my philosophy about cars and driving and then i also have this philosophy about different brand cars which 
I am so sorry. If you, if you are the owner of one of these cars, I am so sorry, but I'm about to say something that may make you mad, but I really want y'all to just think about this because my theories, I'm telling y'all, they be point on. So, I'm going to only go over two cars because these are the only two cars that really matter in this situation story. So, when it comes to a Chrysler, they only give Chryslers to people who cannot drive, okay? I have never seen a Chrysler in mint condition, okay? I always see a Chrysler with a different color, um, you know, part, whether it's a different color bumper, more than likely it's a different color bumper, whether it's a different color door, different color, so, like, there's something always different about a Chrysler, and if not different, it's always some type of damage, whether it is um, a dent, whether it's scratches, whether it's missing parts, like, I'm telling y'all, Chrysler drivers cannot drive. They specifically give Chryslers to people that cannot drive, okay? Period. On this particular day, I felt like I'm on my period. I can't be hitting the brakes that hard because any little motion just upsets me. I'm already late. Why am I rushing and speeding? You know, like, why rush and speed? So, I'm cruising, right? At this point, it's rush hour. So, it's around like 2 o'clock, 2 or 3 o'clock um, in rush hour traffic. So, no one's going fast at all. So, my speed quickly decreased from 60 to four, uh, 60 to 40, but before we got to the point where the speed reduced, there was a Chrysler that was driving behind me. Now, this Chrysler was not on me. So, let's just say this is me and then this is the Chrysler. I'm going to say we were about two car lengths. He had about two good car lengths space behind me, right? So, everything's all good. I'm you know feet like I'm cars away from the person that's in front of me no one's jumping in front of me I'll say at the time I probably had about a good 10 car space in front of me and uh, there was a car beside me but I wasn't really worried about it because he wasn't driving erratic or anything like that so we're driving you know and then suddenly cars start jumping in front of me as I expected and um, we stop right so this is me I'm stopped and the Chrysler behind me is this close, right? So I'm watching him in the mirror get this close to me. So then we go again and we stop and again he's this close to me. And I have a theory that if I can't see your lights, that's a problem. You're too close on me. So I politely, instead of being the ignorant Katie that I usually am behind this, the wheel, I do get a little ignorant and have a lot of road rage, but I was like, you know what, I'm chilling. So I jump over to the next lane. Now, mind you, this is a four lane freeway. So I jump over to the next lane. About a couple of minutes after I jumped over, so does he. So I'm like, damn, like, you know, normally I think to myself, like, did I cut him off, like, in the back, back, like, you know, a couple of exit to go did i speed up and make him nervous so now he's trying to retaliate but again this day i'm feeling like i'm cruising because i'm already late so i rush so from this middle lane i jump back over to the left lane because the car that was in front of me originally when i was originally in the left lane was going so slow and there was so many like like such a big huge space in front of him that I jumped back in front of him and the um Chrysler kind of stays over to the middle lane for a little bit and then jumps back over and now in front of me was one of those souped up F250s. I'm trailing behind it maybe like a car length or two behind him and of course again the Chrysler jumps behind me. So we're you know driving during rush hour and during rush hour there's traffic stop and go and the truck in front of me stopped I stopped but the truck behind me did not stop so he hits me and I'm gonna go ahead and include some pictures somewhere throughout this video just so you guys can see um, and I'm gonna try to blur out um, any faces and numbers and everything but um, yeah so the Chrysler ends up hitting me I look in my window and I see his eyes get like bug eyed. Like he literally looks like this, right? Um, so he hits me and he try. Okay, so this is me. We're in the left lane now. So he hits me. I kind of scoot up a little. Thank God 
that F-250, like, by the time I got hit, the traffic moved. So, I didn't go under that truck or I didn't cause damage to it. So, nothing was in front of me by the time he hit me. But I did, like, oh, this is me originally. So, um, he hits me and I skewed up. And I guess he was trying to come around. Like, I don't know what he was doing, but whatever he was doing, there was a car beside us, right? So, there was a Tahoe on the right side of me, but it was like a little bit further than me. So, now he hits me. He comes over here, hits this Tahoe to on the driver's um rear side he hits like the bumper on there and then the tahoe stops and then he catapults into the third lane and then he hits a um honda accord the two-door one again he hits the left bumper on the driver's side he hits that car travels to the fourth lane and then he scratches a um he hits another car and then slowly rolls over to like the split so where we were um for you guys that are local we were right in front of the grand prairie outlets and there was a split so there was the four lanes over here and then the one lane that kind of like circles around um i think the exit is 428 or something like that um well, he was like slowly drifting over there at that point i was in a state of damn this man literally just hit my car like i just got hit like i that was what was going on in my head and you know normally i'm really careful when i drive even though i drive fast i'm i'm very careful so at this point i'm just in a state of i just got hit right <laughs> i'm thinking about the commercial but anyways i'm like i just got hit so i start to drift over to the right to pull over not looking for any of the cars that may be coming or anything again thank god you know he was watching and everyone else was also watching so i did not get hit crossing the four lanes um and then the two cars the tahoe and the honda they pulled over as well and they immediately jumped out to go run to the guy so i don't know what's about to happen but all i know is that i got hit and a few other people got hit so my mind immediately goes to i was in a car accident um I don't feel hurt, but you know, other people were involved. Maybe they got hurt. Let me call 911. So I'm on the phone with 911. I'm giving them details, but I'm not, I'm, I guess I'm still in a state of crap. Like what happened? Because I can tell them simple stuff like, oh, the car was red. It was a Chrysler. The Chrysler hit three cars. Um, there's about eight people on the scene or, you know, I can tell them stuff like that, but they're asking me stuff like, where are you? And I'm literally, you guys, I'm talking about, I'm right in front of the sign that says exit 440. I think it says 448A. And I'm going to post a picture somewhere. I'm literally standing right in front of that sign. And I'm just like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. And there's like, well, where in Arlington are you? And I'm just like, I don't know. And so I look around. I'm like, oh, I'm next to the outlets, you know. But that's the way that I'm talking to this lady. And normally, I could say, oh, I'm on 20 going this way, blah, blah, blah. But I guess, again, a lot was happening. So during the time of me being on the phone with this lady, I'm just like, I'm seeing so many people run towards the Chrysler that hit me, right? I'm seeing so many people and I'm thinking to myself, where did all these people come from? Um, what's going on? Like, I can't really process it because I'm giving her information. I'm looking around and, um, yeah, it's just a lot going on, right? I'm going to say about at least five of the cars in addition to us four that got hit um ran over to help this person and then there was even a worker's truck that you know the little white painters worker's truck that even blocked the split like the way that he was going they even blocked the tr um excuse me the traffic from going that way to prevent anybody from going around and you know basically just blocking the road um and there was also another lady that was on the phone with 911 but she was in front of me and I really didn't uh know until she came and talked to me so um during this time I'm talking to them and all of a sudden I hear a lady um that's over there near the car because I'm really far away like if the car accident is up here I'm all the way back here like I'm so far from the car but uh, not far enough to where I couldn't see anything or hear anything so I hear the lady say um 
bust out the window. I hear somebody scream out, bust out the window. So the man that was actually in the Tahoe that was next to me that got hit second, um, he starts like hitting his hand against the back window barehanded. And I could hear how strong he was like, how hard he was hitting the window. And then all of a sudden the same lady was like, no, you know, wrap your hand up. So he takes off his shirt and he starts to wrap his hand up um, with the, uh, with his shirt so he can break out the window. But at that time, someone was able to pull the door open to, you know, get the man out. So at this point, I'm still confused. I'm still on the phone trying to give this lady information, but also watch what's going on around me. And, um, they were able to finally get the seatbelt off because they had trouble, you know, getting that off. And I heard, I remember hearing somebody say, we might have to cut it. And then all of a sudden the same lady, cause she's on the passenger side, everybody else was on the driver's side getting the driver out um so that same lady was sitting there and she yelled i just heard her say move back it's about to blow like that's all i heard her say and then they were able maybe about three or four men were able to get the man out the car they pulled him out and they sat him down on the side of the freeway at that point as they were walking away i saw the car spark now when it sparked it was just like a small little fire maybe about this you know like if this was the car then the fire was maybe about this high from the the car but it was high enough for me to see it but it was like a light smoke it was like a light gray smoke nothing major and then the flame went away right so they got the man on the side of the road i see that they're questioning him i'm still on the phone with the lady and um she asked for my name and number in case we get disconnected or in case they need to call me back to get more information you know they get lost or whatever it may be so i gave her my information she told me to sit tight they're on their way and um i was like okay i'll be here we're all waiting with them uh, we managed to get him out the car and he's safe right so the man is sitting on the side of the freeway um it's about maybe about five or six people around him and then all of a sudden the guy that was in the tahoe that was next to us um he comes to me because i'm by my car and he's like hey you need to move your car back because this thing is about to blow like we need to move back so we don't, you know, potentially, so it doesn't potentially trickle down to us, right? So we move out the way. He starts directing traffic and we back up. And all of a sudden, I look over to my right and I see a man with a jacket on, a black jacket that says police. And again, in my mind, I'm just, it's so much going on. I'm, I'm sitting here replaying stuff and it's just a lot going on. So I'm just like, I don't remember hearing a siren or or seeing a police car maybe i was just like so out of it or distracted that i didn't see it but um nonetheless the guy had on a police jacket and he was directing traffic on the split side to make sure nobody went that way you know um because at this point the workers truck has driven off because when the lady when the people were like it's about to blow everyone kind of freaked out and panicked and then they got away from the car well once we start backing up long and behold the car sits on fire and then the flame comes back and it's this thick black smoke and i'm going to insert a picture here for you guys so you can see what it looks like um and at this point everyone that was kind of like the bystanders that were was helping us or helping the guy rather um they pretty much left so it was just me the two guys so the guy that was in the tahoe the guy that was in the blue car the hunter Accord that i mentioned um and then the other guy that got hit fourth he actually didn't have any damage he got a little scuff mark but he got the less of the damage so he just said you know what forget about it he drove off but the rest of us we actually had damage to our car so we stayed um so at this point, once the car is still in smoke, um, the guys that were, the lady and the man that were in the Tahoe, they actually put him in the back seat of his top, of their Tahoe until um, the ambulance and the police came and whatever. So the guy that was originally in the Chrysler, they put him in the back of his truck. So at this point, I'm standing outside. We're all staying outside. We're just waiting. Um, and then the guy that had the police jacket comes over and starts talking to me and he's like, do you think the man was high? Do you think he was drunk? Um, you know, what happened? He's asking me questions like that. And I'm like, no, the man didn't look drunk. You know, but then again, it could be that I'm naive. I'm thinking that to myself, like, you know, I, I don't drink, so I don't really, can't really recognize what drunkness looks like. But if, if I had an idea in my head, he didn't look drunk to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though I've never experienced drunkness and it's hard for me to tell, 
I just didn't feel like in my heart he was drunk. Um, I don't remember him being distracted. Like, I don't remember him looking down during that time of us doing this. I don't remember him ever looking down um, or looking around or anything like that. At least that's what I think or remember. Um, I didn't think he was high or anything like that. So, I really didn't know what happened. So, the guys asked me a question or whatever. And then finally, the ambulance comes. And they're the first on the scene. The ambulance and the firefighters. So, the firefighters immediately go for the car and start getting the car under control because again at this point it's the thick black smoke so they're over there um they pull the man out of the tahoe into the back of the ambulance they're trying to talk to him figure out what's going on and they're working on him so meanwhile the rest of us um because there's actually multiple people in the tahoe because they were on their way to their um nephews excuse me they were on their way to their godchild's birthday party right up the street so it was the man his wife and the two kids in the back Thankfully, when I was speaking to the wife, she did tell me that the two boys in the back, they didn't feel anything. They were asleep the whole time. They had no idea what happened. So that was a good thing for that. You know, they weren't traumatized by the event or had millions of questions for um, the mom and dad. So that was a blessing, too, that they never woke up throughout the whole time. So it was a family in that car. The guy that was in the Hyundai Accord was just him. Um, like I said, I was on my way to a baby shower and then the guy that had the police jacket, um, we were talking for a little bit and I looked down and I'm just like, this is not a police officer. <laughs> like he had on, um, of course he had on the jacket, but when he had on the jacket, he had always zipped up so I couldn't see what was under it. But I looked down and his pants were, um, they were, what is that color? They were army green sweatpants, army green puma sweatpants, and then he had the matching white and army green pants to, uh, excuse me, shoes to match. And I'm just like, I don't remember, like, either this man is off duty, either he's, or he's undercover. Like, I don't think the police officers can just walk around dressed like this, right? So, <laughs> so that happened so we're talking about it and he's asking these questions and he's like you know what i'm gonna go over here and figure out what's happening like did you get the man's insurance information and i was like no when would i have time to get the man's insurance information um you know i'm trying to stay back here out the way making sure that i'm good like no nah, i didn't go over there and harass him like the man just got in an accident i'm not gonna be like you need to give me your papers like no nah, i'm not no no i'm not so he went over there to talk to the ambulance um the emts and came back and he was like okay so this is what you're gonna do they're gonna do this this and that make sure that you call an insurance company because it's not too bad of a damage but um, you're going to need a bumper replacement, but well, like he's telling me everything that I need to do. Right. So I'm just like, I'm still kind of like confused and I'm not dazed, but I'm just like, okay. Like I'm just taking it all in. Right. So, um, <laughs> so then we start talking. He, I don't know how, again, I, I might've missed some parts on how this happened, but he pulls out his phone he has an iPhone. He has like an iPhone 10, I believe. And um, he's talking about his phone and saying that he doesn't know how to work it. And I was like, oh, you're an Android user. He's like, yeah, I recently switched over, blah, blah, blah. So we're having a conversation about that. And he's like, um, only reason why I got it is because my daughter, she's away in college right now. And she wanted me to get this phone. And I'm just like, okay. Like, again, I'm I'm having a conversation with this person, but it's like, nothing's really sticking in my head of like what's going on right like i'm still focused on damn i just got hit <laughs> like i don't like that's what my head is right so um finally the police come on the scene and again they're asking the same questions like what happened blah blah, blah. and they're coming over to me since i was the one that called and it's like okay so what lane were you in what lane was this person in what was the order can you tell me about where the person got hit um well, excuse me where you got hit at originally and i i drew a line for him and showed him and then they followed the track of like there was a liquid track so they followed that and you know it was a lot going on. So then the guy that had the police jacket, um, we're going to call him, um, is it Christian? Is that the guy's name from Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> we're going to call him Christian. So Christian, um, dang, did I name the other guy Christian in the other video? 
No, I named him Chris. I don't want to confuse the two. So let's call him James. I like the name James. So James um, is the guy in the black police jacket with the um, olive green pants on and shoes. So army green, excuse me. So James is like, you know what? Let me go over here and talk to the police real quick and um i'm like all right cool james you, you do you boo boo and then in my head i'm thinking oh like james also got hit you know i just for some reason i don't remember him getting hit but james got hit too right that's that's what i'm thinking in my head because it's no way that this man is just standing over here for no good reason and wasting his time if he didn't get hit <laughs> So James goes over there and he talks to the police and he comes back and James tells me that the man that hit us um, actually had a seizure a week or two ago and they gave him some medicine and he had a reaction to um, the medicine. So he kind of had like a, a a seizure or like he, he had a reaction or I, I can't, I can't remember if the medicine caused him to space out or if it caused him to have like another seizure, but whatever it is, he's prone to Caesar, seizures. He's prone to seizures, seizures, scissors. <laughs> no, this is a serious moment. He's prone to seizures and um, the medicine didn't help. You know, bottom line, that's what it was. Came back and told me that information. I was just like, damn, like, you know, for what happened and for the amount of damage nobody was hurt like nobody was hurt at least what i know of nobody was hurt i wasn't hurt he wasn't hurt the man that actually hit everybody um the kids weren't hurt the guy in the hunter court nobody was hurt so i was like wow that was really a blessing for our, us to go through what we went through and to see the amount of damage and nothing happened right you know what this is a very long video and i didn't realize how long this was um I'm actually going to stop the video here because I don't want this video to be too, too, too long. Um, but we're going to stop the video here because after James came back and told me that the man had a seizure, things got a little bit more interesting. So we're going to cut it off here. Um, make sure that you stick around. Make sure that you hit the bell for post notifications for when I drop part two of this story, as well as all the other videos that I plan on dropping very, very soon. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like I said, I will be making a part two to this to let you know what happened when James came back to talk to me. Um, but for now, thank you so, so much for watching today's video. Thank you for all your love and support. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.